Okay guys, so now I am back and I have hooked up uh, the Super Nintendo Classic Mini to my PC using the micro USB cable. It goes all the way back to my PC. Uh, it will power it on. And um, here I have connected, or no, here it is. Here is the power cable. It's a micro USB cable. And to show you that it works, uh, I actually used a iPhone um, a iPhone socket to connect it to uh, my wall socket. This is an extension over here and uh, here it is. It's a micro USB USB cable and this one is from the iPhone from Apple and it goes all the way back into my SNES mini over here and then I have a standard HDMI cable. You can use any kind of HDMI cable. Here at the back is my PC. Um, I'm using a Avermedia game broadcaster uh, capture card. It's an internal um, PCI Express capture card uh, with an HDMI input. So I've routed the HDMI cable back to my uh, PC into my capture card and I will play at 1080p uh, in pixel perfect resolution. Um, here I have connected one of the two controllers to my SNES Mini and I will also demonstrate how the uh, other controller works with it. But first, let's power it on and show you some awesome games. There it goes. It takes like two seconds to power on. There you can see it. And then the feed will go live. And this is how it looks. Looks very nice and the sound is also great. So let's put the camera down. And talk about some games and show you some gameplay. So here is the controller. Now let's start out with the first game on the list or no let's let's have a look at some of the options. Center the camera like that. Okay I'll show you the options. Uh, over here you have your display options. You have like three options. You can use a CRT, CR2 filter if you like to. Uh, this filter will uh, add extra scan lines like and it will emulate the CRT scan line view of an older monitor but that one is only for retro guys so since I'm using a, a PC monitor uh, no need for that. Then you can use the original 4x3 aspect ratio. That one I would actually recommend. But since I'm playing on a, such a high resolution uh, screen, I will go with Pixel Perfect. Then down here you have all kind of frames. You can choose the default black. Then there is this frame. This one right here is very awesome. There is the black one, the blue one. Then there is this one. I will use this one. It looks really nice. And this one all kind of cool background. The wooden one is also very nice. And this one, this one is good for Metroid I think, the space one. And this one looks very retro nice. And this, there is this. This is from Super Mario All-Stars. Wonder why Super Mario All-Stars didn't make it into this collection. And this one is the Skylines. Awesome. But I would go with the retro one. That one I liked. So yeah, then we go back. Uh, then we have here the options menu, you can choose uh, the gameplay demo, uh, if you are away from the screen it will play the gameplay demo for you, very nice. Then what else, you can use also the classic uh, demo, then there is a screen burning reduction, you should have all those checked if you haven't. And of course you can reset your system to the factory reset, but since I don't need it, I just got to go back. Looks nice. Then at the back here you have um, the language menu. You can choose from English, Francais, or French, German, Spanish. This I believe is Russian, or could I could be wrong, could be Greek. Sorry, <laughs> uh, then there is Portuguese, Netherlands, or uh, Dutch and it Italian. I will just go with English even though I live here in Germany, but I will go with English. 
uh, another very interesting thing about this uh, Super Nintendo Mini is every game or every ROM on there is in English language. So sorry for you German guys or uh, Italian guys if you want to play those games in Italian or German. Um, you have to wait till they hack the console so you can import a fan translated uh, version of your favorite game into it. But as of right now everything is in English. So yeah. Uh, then there are the legal notices over here. Just the agreement and that it's an open source software. And of course last but not least you get all the manuals for all the games, the classic games, um, but there is a catch to it. You will need a smartphone, and when you have a smartphone, you see this code over here. You just scan this code with your uh, smartphone, and then you can access all the manuals for all the games, the classic, um, the classic manuals for all the games in digital form on your smartphone. And of course, last but not least, down here we have a very awesome um, save function feature, which allows you to save uh, your or quick save your game. For example, like here, I did a quick save for Super Metroid um, before I recorded this video, and then you can use that quick save. You can use up to four quick save for a game. So this is very awesome. We are used to some kind of uh, quick saving system on emulators for years by now, but now I believe this one will come in handy for, where is it, the very hardcore uh, Super Ghosts and Goblins, this one. You will definitely want to make a lot of quick saves uh, for this game, because this game is insanely hard. And yes, it's very nice to have four um, quick save slots down here. Awesome! Now, one tiny little critique I have with um, the Super Nintendo Mini is, um, well, when you start a game and you want to go back to this menu over here to start another game, um, you have to press the reset button on the console every time you want to do it. There is no quick um, method on the controller to do so. It would have been cool if you press the uh, start and select simultaneously and it will boot you back to this menu. However, um, on the classic controller, on the Wii Classic controller, you have a home button over here and you can use this home button to boot back into the menu, which is excellent. I will demonstrate later on, but first let's play some awesome games. Alright guys, and as you can see down here you have tiny little icons, it will show you... Um, I don't know what this one over here is. I think it's like... One player is for one player and some games will have two players. Like for example Contra is for two players, you can play it in two player mode. Then Donkey Kong Country also. And uh, Final Fantasy... Oh! Final Fantasy... Six can be played with two players. That's new, actually. I didn't know that. Of course, Kirby Superstar, you can play it on two player. Green Cross Mega Man 1 is. Wow, but Final Fantasy 6 or 3 is for two players. I didn't know that. And I love that game. Um, Star Fox 1 is for one player. And uh, I believe Star Fox 2 is locked away. You need to play one level of Star Fox 1 to unlock Star Fox 2. And of course two Street Fighter Turbo is for two players. And Super Mario Kart, one of the best games on here. Excellent game. Two players of course. Super Mario RPG is for one player. Super Mario World is for two players of course. Then Super Metroid, one of my favorite games of all time. And Contra, yeah. We are back on the start. So yeah guys, you can see down here which game is for two players and you can plug in your second gamepad and play it. But let's le just start with Mega Man X. I love Mega Man X. Where it is? There it is, one of the best games. Just listen to the awesome sound.
excellent. I loved it back in its day and I still love it. So let's just start a game. And right now I'm on pixel perfect resolution. And it plays fantastic with the Super Nintendo gamepad. It plays really fantastic. I don't know if you can see it. But it plays really great. I mean the controls are so responsive and nice. It's such a shame that they didn't include Mega Man X2 and Mega Man X3 on here because those two are great, great games. The whole Mega Man X trilogy on the Super Nintendo are excellent games. Uh, but I believe they will, they already hacked the firmware or the system software of the Super Nintendo Mini and they already added Chrono Trigger on here. So if they can add Chrono Trigger, I believe they will also add, uh, you can add basically all the games you would like on here, or all the ROMs, you can load up all the ROMs. Excellent. So, let's try another one, press reset on the console. It will boot me up, and as you can see, um, now I can use a quick save by pressing Y. Uh, for example, let's make a quick save of Mega Man, and then uh, I did a quick save. And if I do, if I start it up, I'm right back where I started. Pretty awesome. And let's press reset again, and I'm back. So this feature will be very helpful if you are using uh, for it for games like Super Ghosts and Goblins. All right. Well, let's actually try Star Fox to unlock Star Fox 2. Let's play that one. I believe you have to play the first level of Star Fox to be able to unlock it. And there it is. Great game. I believe one of the very first uh, 3D games on the... Or I believe the first... 3D game on the Super Nintendo. Or let's go with default controls. Let's start the game. Go with the straight to Venom route. Let's see if I can still pull it off. And as you can see, all the text of the games are in English. So if you're a guy from Germany, or if you're a kid who can't uh, understand proper English, uh, you have to really have to wait. Or at least I believe they already hacked the Super Nintendo, so you will be able to play uh, custom translated ROMs in your language of uh, in your favorite language or in your native language. All right, and here I go. It still plays really good. I believe if I fly through those gates, I will get a Twin Blaster. There it is, the Twin Blaster. Or the Laser, Twin Laser. It's excellent, actually. I remember when I first got this game, I was so excited, I played it for weeks. Excellent. There is also another game called Stunt Racer FX, 
which also uses the um, FX chip. And the controls are very tight. Love the controls. Oh, what's uh, back here? Another bomb, I guess. Oh shit. I tried to get that bomb, but... That was a bad idea, I guess. Let's see if I can make it through. Oh, that one actually refilled my... The blue circle refilled my shields. Yeah, it's awesome. Love this one. And I believe it's also very short. If you are good, you can finish it in one hour, I believe. It's not that long of a game, actually. Oh, there it is, the boss. Let's see if I, if I can still... Kill him. Oh yeah. I still remember. Oh man, he didn't even have a chance. You saw that. But there are some difficult games, uh, or difficult, uh, yeah, games in this collection, or on the SNES Mini, like Super Ghosts and Goblins is very difficult. Um, Contra, I believe, is also very hard if you uh, if you don't play in two-player mode. And there it is. So I hope I, I have unlocked. Unlocked it. Oh, the asteroid belt. You can go in first person view during this mission. You can go in and out by using select. It's still a great game, I'm actually quite enjoying it, to be quite honest. So, let's pause over here and see if I, if I unlocked Star Fox 2. Yes, and I think I did. Boom, there it is. You unlocked Star Fox 2. Look how it how cool it looks. Let's have a look at that one. It was never released on the Super Nintendo even though it was finished or almost finished and then Nintendo decided since they were doing a Star Fox game for the Nintendo 64 they scrapped um, they scrapped this one and they moved over to Star Fox 64. So this is one of the reasons this one never got released and um, some of you may know that there is a beta for it or a ROM beta on uh, on the internet where you can play it, play it on your emulator but uh, this is actually uh, first time released for the SNES uh, classic mini so if you are a fan of Star Fox. This is what this could be one of the reasons to get it, but let's see. Let's go with normal. Yeah, nice. And Android seems to be back. And he's talking in English. Oh 
All right. Oh, this looks like very RPG-like. Okay, you can select Fox, Falco, Peppy, Sleepy. Then there are two new characters, Miu. I believe like he's a I don't know what he is, a fox I guess. And Fi. Fi is like a poodle. Alright. Let's go with Fi. Since she's new. And I I think I have to use a backup. Let's go with Fox. Nice. Yeah, looks great, sounds great. Okay, cool. So now I can fly. Let's fly over there. Titania. You can choose your path. And it looks like a strategy game. Pigma. Oh, I can actually go go in third person view. I'm kind of confused to be honest. There it is. I guess I have to get his health bar low. Pigma. I guess he's a pig. Damn. It's not easy, you guys. I'm not used to those archaic controls. Oh, I think I will die. So yeah, I will stop here and show you some other games. But before I will do that, uh, I will show you how to switch the gamepads. So I was playing on the original uh, Super Nintendo gamepad for the SNES Classic Mini and now I will switch to the um, Wii U Classic Gamepad Pro. So this one is an excellent controller. Um, I would advise to get it. There is also a Wii U Pro controller. This one is the original classic Wii Pro Controller and I will just plug it into my Super Nintendo Mini as you can see and now the cool thing about this is uh, it's plug and play of course but uh, instead of pressing reset on the Super Nintendo I can press the home button and it will bring me back to the menu pretty awesome and now last but not least let's play Super Metroid the best game in my opinion of course there are also other excellent games, but Super Metroid has a special place in my heart. Where is it? There it is. Oh, well, let's see if I can load up the quick save.
Yes, I can. Because this game has a very long introductional scene. And it plays great on this control. Very clicky, very great. Um, you can use the, the original controllers, but if you are into some heavy gaming and you want precise controls, get a Pro Controller and use it with your Super Nintendo Mini. Trust me guys, it's, it's that good. I mean, look at the atmosphere, it's so well done. And it's in 24-bit. And it will fly away. And we have one minute to escape the space station before it collapses or explodes. One of the best games ever released on the Super Nintendo. Alongside Chrono Trigger, of course. Which was added in a recent update. But not by Nintendo, it was updated by fans. So there I escape. And now I fly to Zebes. There it is. Home of the Space Pirates. I mean, look at it. It's so awesome. I'm so glad to be able to play this. Uh, in such high resolution, in pixel perfect resolution, on my PC monitor, it's such a joy. So yeah, guys, let now let's go back to the menu and talk about all the games and my experience with it, starting from the far left with Contra. Well, Contra 3 The Alien Wars, um, this is actually the US version, here in Europe, um, I believe it was called Probotector and it included robots, instead of humans it included robots. Um, I played it with my brother, this is an excellent game, um, I believe this is one of the best two player games on here, uh, you should definitely pick this one up and uh, play it with a friend uh, on the Super Nintendo because this is really a hell of a nice shooter very great game it should definitely be on here uh, Donkey Kong Country also the US version very awesome game um, very re revolutionary graphics for its time um, I've played it finished it um, yes I, sh I should also mention that uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 which was the game I first played, uh, is also an excellent entry. Rare, Rare did a lot of great games back in its day for the Super Nintendo, like Donkey Kong Country, and later on they made Perfect Dark and Goldeneye for the Nintendo 64, which are true classics, no doubt. Uh, next up we have Earthbound. Earthbound is very interesting, I never played it. Um, I think it was also never released in Europe. Um, 
Instead, we got some other great games over here, like Terra Enigma and Secret of Evermore, uh, which are two of very good RPGs. Um, guys from Europe who know them uh, know what I'm talking about. Also, another great RPG um, I want to mention that doesn't get so much praise is Lufia 2, which is an excellent RPG. So, Lufia 2, Terra Enigma, and Secret of Evermore are some of the great games that are missing on this collection, but um, I, I guess we will be added later on by fans. So yeah, Earthbound, I never played it, I heard only good things about it, I heard it's very controversial, it has some weird subtext to it, and yeah, it's definitely one of the best games. It's also incredible, uh, expensive to find in the US so having it on here uh, it's a great addition definitely okay next up is a true classic F-Zero uh, I played this one it was actually bundled with a lot of Super Nintendo's back in its day great racing game excellent excellent entry um, alongside Mario Kart of course next up we have one of the best Final Fantasy entries ever created this one is the US version, it's called Final Fantasy 3 in the US. Here in Europe it was actually called Final Fantasy 6, but you know this by now. Also, look at the cover, the cover is kind of weird in the US. It's like this mogul uh, figure and uh, I also kind of curious that it was for two players because I remember this one being a single player game. So yeah, Final Fantasy 3 one of the best Final Fantasy entries for the Super Nintendo. Um, I would have uh, added Final Fantasy V as well, because Final Fantasy V, that's a game I actually completed, and it has a very deep customization system, and it was also never released outside of Japan, never. So Final Fantasy V would have been a very great entry, it's a very good Final Fantasy game, very underrated, and uh, should definitely be up there. Alright. Oh, I loaded up my save file. Right, so Final Fantasy 6 or Final Fantasy 3, very good game. Glad to have it on here. Too bad, no Chrono Trigger, but I guess uh, it was already added with a new hack. Then next up are two games I never actually played. Kirby Superstar uh, there, there are it's like a compilation of Kirby games I can't comment much on it because I never was a big Kirby fan back in its day and I actually never played it that much but I heard it's a very solid game and of course Kirby's Dream Course another Kirby game I never played uh, but I heard those two are very good so yeah they definitely deserve a place on here Personally, I would have switched them to something more like Donkey Kong Country 2 or Mega Man X 2, but, well, they are good, I guess. They are very good entry points. Then next up, Mega Man X, one of the best Super Nintendo games, and I think also one of the best Mega Man games ever created. Love it. Excellent soundtrack, excellent gameplay. Um, also, a good story, a very... It's, it has a lot of darker, more darker themes than the regular Mega Man series. Um, it's, it's a very good game. Also Mega Man X2 and X3 are also very good. I actually have um, the PC version of Mega Man X3 and it's a very solid entry. So um, if, you, if you are from the US or Europe and you have a you still have your classic Mega Man X games like 1 to 3 uh, keep them because they went so up in prices and it's insane actually how much they are worth uh, in their box so I guess they are very collectible much like um, much like Earthbound is but Earthbound got never released here in Europe um, so yeah guys, Mega Man X, true classic, one of my favorites. Next up we have Secret of Mana, another great game. Um, I, I even forgot this one was for two players. Uh, yeah, I finished it all the way back uh, in the 90s, I believe, 
and it's a very solid entry, a very deep RPG, great visuals. Uh, and I heard it's also it also gets a release or a a remake. Sorry, not a re-release, a remake on on the PC and on the other consoles. So I'm looking forward for the remake of this next year, 2018. So yeah, Secret of Mana definitely one of the best uh, RPGs on the Super Nintendo of course alongside other great RPGs like the very underrated Lufia 2 uh, Terra Nigma which was released only here in Europe and of course Secret of Evermore which is also great or Illusion of Gaia if you re remember Illusion of Gaia that one is also very great yeah the um, Super Nintendo houses some impressive RPGs by the way Star Fox, nothing much to say about Star Fox, loved it back in its day, still great to play uh, the first uh, Super Nintendo game to use the FX chip. Later on, Stun Tracer FX used it and uh, yeah, great game. Star Fox 2, can't comment much about it, uh, looks okay, looks fun, uh, it was released uh, for this console only uh, and years back, so in 2017. But it looks fun. If you like the original Star Fox, uh, you should definitely love this one. Um, I know a lot of guys played it on the, the beta on the ROM or on the emulator, but I never managed to play it or I never actually played it. So yeah, definitely uh, two solid entries which should be on here. Next up, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Uh, believe it or not, I actually uh, never played this game that much. Um, I played Super Street Fighter 2, the original, a lot. Loved it when I first got my hands on it. Very solid fighting game, one of the best. It's it's crazy good. Uh, I don't even know, or I don't even know the original Street Fighter. Was it for the SNES? I think so. But Torbo, I never played that much. It was very expensive back way back then to obtain. But I played the much better, I believe, Super Street Fighter 2, the new Challengers. That one is great. It has Fai Long, Kami, T Hawk, I believe. And it's a solid entry. Too bad that one isn't on here, but Torbo is great as well. So yeah, definitely. Castlevania 4, another great game, and believe it or not, guys, this one I actually never played. Um, my and for a guy like me who whose channel is based around Castlevania, uh, I actually my entry point in the Castlevania series was on the PlayStation with Symphony of the Night, which is one of the best uh, games or best Castlevania entries ever created. And this one I actually never came across to play it. Uh, from Symphony of the, of the Night onwards I played all the Nintendo DS Castlevanias which are great. But this one kinda fell back in the shadows for me. And I will definitely play it and I'm glad to play it. There is also another very underrated um, Castlevania game on the Super Nintendo which was also never released here in Europe. It's called Castlevania or Dracula X or Vampire's Kiss, something like that. I think it's called Dracula X. That one is actually a Super Nintendo port of Rondo of Blood and I played the original Rondo of Blood and it's one of the best games or one of the best entries in the Castlevania series. And I'm kinda curious, I have it on the Nintendo 3DS but didn't came around to play it. But yeah, Castlevania 4 Great, great Castlevania entry I heard, and I will definitely play it just for the Castlevania's sake. Next up, we have one of the hardest games on here. It's Super Ghosts and Ghosts. Um, it adds Super behind the title or in front of the title because, um, well, it's for the Super Nintendo. This game is bone hard. Um, I, I believe a little bit easier than the NES counterpart but, or NES original but still it's a very hard game. I definitely use the save features on here. Um, I remember getting this game as a kid from a friend, he lent it to me, it to me, and I played it for like one day 
and after that I never played it again because it kicked my ass so hard and I was just frustrated with it. So yes, this one I I see why some people love it, but personally it's the difficulty it's just a pain to play through. But it's it's a great game. Don't uh, don't be let down by my experience, it's definitely one of the great games on there and it's made by Capcom, so Capcom back in its day was one of the best developers for the Super Nintendo. Next up, Super Mario Kart. I don't uh, think I have to talk much about Super Mario Kart. This game is one of the very best uh, entries on the Super Nintendo. I played it to death back in its day, played it with my brother. It has a fantastic two-player mode. It has two-player battle. You can you can do racing. You can do all kinds of weird stuff. There there are secret tracks. This this is so this entry is so well done. It was such a well done game. Um, definitely one of the best Super Nintendo games. I can't praise this one much enough. It, this is a must-have for uh, any Super Nintendo owner out there. And it's just fun to play. I played it, and it's it's fantastic. Very uh, much recommended. Next up is a game I actually never played, and I only heard good things about it. It's Super Mario RPG: Legend of the S Seven Stars. Um, I believe this one was never released here in Europe. Could be released in the US, I believe. But it's a very interesting one. It's also uh, co-made by Square Enix, so very interesting. But I can't comment much about it because I never played it back in its day, I never played it recently. And this is a game that, much like Earthbound, is very new to me. Uh, not Complete not new to me are the next two entries, which are of course Super Mario World, true true classic, um, lovely to death, played it so many times on the original Super Nintendo. I got it with my Super Nintendo and alongside Super Mario All-Stars, of course. And kind of bummer that they didn't include Super Mario All-Stars in here, but Super Mario World is an excellent game. There are so many secrets in this game. I believe uh, back then in the 90s when I didn't have the internet connection, I couldn't figure out for the life of me how to unlock it to 100%. There are so many secrets like uh, hidden levels, hidden techniques, hidden whatnot, and I think I got around uh, unlocking like maybe 97% but I never came around to unlock the 100%, I just don't know where it is. So maybe, maybe if I have time, and uh, I am a diehard uh, Super Mario F World fan, but uh, I will have to check it out if I can unlock 100%, maybe finally now on the Super Nintendo Mini, who knows, who knows. Next up is, of course, one of my favorite games of all time, Super Metroid, uh, excellent entry. Uh, got it for my uh, birthday, I believe, I, I forgot, for my 8th birthday, many, I believe. Uh, and uh, I didn't think much of, about it back then. But then I played it and it just blew my mind. This is one of the rare games out there that does everything perfectly. Much like Zelda here and uh, Mega Man X and Super Mario World and whatnot. Um, with perfectly I mean it blends everything perfectly. Art design, gameplay, soundtrack, uh, uh, boss design. Everything is just so well polished and so well done. Um, this one here put Super Metroid on the map, um, or at least it's it's a fantastic game. And when you hear the term Metroidvania nowadays, remember that this one and Symphony of the Night for the PlayStation uh, created the Metroidvania genre, where you can run around the map uh, at your own pace and unlock the secrets at your own pace. Great entry, uh, true classic. People still play this game today and speedrun it to hell and back uh, on Twitch. Yeah, definitely. If you haven't played it, this is a great entry. Definitely play it out. Uh, Super Punch Out, another great game. I heard good things about it, but actually, I never played it on the original Super Nintendo and never owned it actually. 
So yeah, uh, it would be interesting to play, much like Super Mario RPG and uh, Earthbound. Looking forward to play this one. Then next up, another game I own and love, uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Excellent game, I owned it back in the day, played it to death, unlocked it 100%, uh, unraveled all the secrets, much like Super Metroid. Uh, it needs to be here, it's a true classic. Uh, I even have it on the port on the Game Boy Advance, very great game. Uh, definitely pick this one up, or if you never played it, now it's the time. Also has a very great uh, remake on the 3DS, called, uh, I believe, A Link to the Past, or how is it called? Something like that. I, I forgot how, how the remake is called, but it has a very great remake on the 3DS. Next up we have another great game, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, and to be quite honest with you, uh, I love this game on the Super Nintendo, but I never finished it. I remember a friend of mine lending it to me, and I played it for like one week, and didn't finish it, and then I gave it back to him, and since then I never actually played it, but it's a great game. It's definitely uh, a very beautiful looking game, very nice art design, very very solid entry. And that's about it guys, those are all the 21 games you will get on the Super Nintendo Classic Mini. Um, yeah, I know there are some awesome entries missing like SimCity, like uh, Super Soccer, like Chrono Trigger of course, but I think with Chrono Trigger it's a licensing issue. Um, Terra Enigma, Secret of Evermore, those are some great recommendation of mine. Um, clock Tower, the Japanese only Clock Tower is a great game for the Super Nintendo. Um, then we have uh, some other underrated games. I can't think of it of them right now. But yes guys, this is a very solid collection of games. It's a very nice, good vertical slice of the library of games that were released back then. I kinda wish I would have a time machine to fly back to the 90s and uh, just play it back then, but I believe back then we didn't even have HDMI so or even USB ports. So yeah guys, this was my review and unboxing of the Super Nintendo Classic Mini. I hope you enjoyed it very much like I did. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And as always, everyone take good care and bye bye.